Welcome into the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime. Josh McKinney, Jamie McCracken. One of our not so jam packed shows of the season. Unfortunately, we have, we do hope you've stayed warm. Yeah. Tonight, a highlight free show, which is kind of sad. Depressing. Yeah. The <laughs> weather has kind of wreaked some havoc, as you know. So we bring you brackets. Brackets. This show is dedicated to the upcoming district tournaments, which start Monday. More than 100 teams competing for a spot in the region tournaments and eventually the state tournaments. We will end the show in the 62nd district with Morgan County, but we start in the 12th region in District 47. Let's just go ahead and get this thing started. Here is how the girls 47th district tourney stacks up. Rock Castle County will take on Somerset 6 o'clock and then following that game, the Pulaski County Lady Maroons versus Casey County. Both of these games will be held at Pulaski County High School. Rock Castle swept Somerset in the regular season, but Pulaski and Casey, those two teams split. All right, meanwhile, in the 47th District, boys will start on Tuesday. Pulaski County would take on Rockcastle County at 6 p.m. And then right after that, Somerset will play Casey County at 730. The Maroons swept Rock, scoring 63 points in both games, while Somerset swept the Rebels. The first game was a one-point win, the second game an eight-point win by the Briar Jumpers. Now to the 48th District, the number two Southwestern Lady Warriors get the bye, so they will play the winner of Wayne County and McCreary Central. The Wayne Lady Cards won both regular season games against the Raiders. These games will be held at Wayne County High School. Wayne and McCreary tip off at 6 p.m. The championship will be at 7 p.m. on Thursday, February 26th. To the boys, the 48th district. These games also at Wayne County High School. The number two Southwestern Warriors will face off against McCreary Central 730 on Monday. The winner gets the defending 13th region champ Wayne County. The title game set for 7 o'clock tip off next Friday. February 27th. On to the 13th region, 49th district. The North Laurel Lady Jaguars will play Jackson County in round one, while the winner of Oneida Baptist and Redbird will play Clay County. The Lady Jags and Lady Generals will tip things off Tuesday, February 24th at 6 o'clock. But before that on Monday, OBI and Redbird will decide who moves on. That game set for 6 o'clock. The winner gets a day off. And then on Wednesday, we'll play Clay County for a chance to play in the championship. All right, now to the boys. Same deal in the bottom bracket. OBI and Redbird will play essentially a play-in game. Tip time set for 7.45 p.m. at North World. The winner will play third-ranked Clay County at Wednesday on Wednesday, February 25th at 6. Meanwhile, the top bracket features Jackson County and North World. Tip time set for 7.45 p.m. on Tuesday, February 24th. To the 50th district now, the girls' tournament gets underway at South World Monday at 6.30 with the reigning 13th region champ the Corbin Lady Redhounds taking on first year head coach Amanda Vermillion and the Williamsburg Lady Jackets Tuesday at 630. The Lady Colonels of Whitley County and the South Laurel Lady Cardinals get together with a ticket to the region tourney on the line. Now the what should be extremely exciting boys 50th district <laughs> could not be any more competitive. Whitley County swept Corbin in district play and now the number one seed will try and go for a win number three on the Redhounds this season Monday. 815 Colonels and Red Hounds. Then on Tuesday night, Jeff Davis and the South Laurel Cardinals meet up with Patrick Robinson and the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets at 815. No shortage of drama in the 50th next week. Moving down Highway 25E to the 51st in Pineville. Two first year girls head coaches meet up in the opening round. Wendy Messer of KNOX takes on Brandon Simpson and Barberville Monday at 6 o'clock. Then following that game at 730, Pineville and the Lady Wildcats of Lincamp. All right, staying in Pineville for the boys 51st, the Knox Central Panthers hitting their stride at the right time, winning the last four regular season games. They face Lynn Camp Tuesday at 730. The Panthers beat the Wildcats 72 to 29 in the regular season. And then Wednesday at 7 p.m., J.D. Strange versus Dinky Phipps, Mountain Lions and Tigers winner gets a trip to the 13th region tournament. Harlan, Harlan County, Middlesboro, Bell County. This is the girls 52nd district, which will be held at Bell County High School. Should be a goodie in the top bracket. The Lady Dragons will go for a third in a row, three in a row versus Harlan County this year. Tip time set for 6 p.m. on Monday, and then Bell and the Borough will tip off shortly after that around 7.30 p.m. On the boys' side, it's Harlan County taking on Middlesboro, and then Bell County versus Harlan in the first round of the 52nd. 6 o'clock tip time for the Black Bears and Yellow Jackets. 7.30 tip time for the Bobcats and Green Dragons. The last game Bell played was actually against Harlan. The Cats won 
by 10 points. So there's your 12th and 13th regions coming up on the sports overtime. We do have a Kentucky basketball story, but more brackets. Yeah, first more brackets up next. We will take you through the 53rd, 54th, 55th, and 56th district tournament. Welcome back into this bracket edition of the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime. Yes, let's go to the 53rd District now. Ladies first start with the bottom bracket, a play-in type situation with Cordia and June Buchanan. 6 p.m. tip time on Monday. Between those two, winner will play Letcher Central on Wednesday, February 25th at 6. And then following that game, also on Wednesday, it'll be not Central versus Whitney Creech and the Jenkins Lady Cavaliers. Could be a good one. Now to the boys, all these games at Letcher Central High School, just like the girls. Number one, not Central, will play Jenkins this Monday, 730, while Letcher and JBS will play Tuesday, the 24th at 7. The championship game will be Thursday night at 7 o'clock. On to the 54th district now. The Leslie County Lady Eagles have been in our mountain top 10 all year long, about three or four all year long. <laughs> they will play Hazard at 6 o'clock, while Perry Central and Buckhorn will tip off around eight. Both of these games held at Perry Central High School on this coming Monday, February 23rd. Leslie has won all three regular season games versus Hazard with a combined score 202 to 104. Was that your math? That was good research, wasn't it? <laughs> the girls 55th looks like this. Both games will be played at Wolf County High School on this Monday, the 23rd, first at six. And oh, Wildcats also <laughs> swept Leslie County, my bad, and also scored a combined total of 202 points in all three of their games. However, the winning margin a little more slim, two one point wins and a 16 point win. Buckhorn and Leslie will get things started in the boys 54th district tip time set for 7 p.m. Tuesday, February 24th. And then on Wednesday at 7 p.m., a rematch from one of our games of the week here at WYMT. Hazard will play Perry Central. The Commodores looking for some revenge. Both of these games, along with the championship, are at Perry Central. All right, now, now I was getting, on to the 55th. Yeah, I, was, I was a little ahead of myself there. Now to the girls 55th. It looks like this. Both games will be played at Wolf County High School on this Monday, the 23rd. First at 6, Breathitt County versus Riverside. And then at approximately 7 p.m., Wolf County will take on Jackson City. The championship game is set for Thursday, February 26th at 7 p.m. The boys first round in the 55th looks like this. Takes place on Tuesday, the 24th. Also at Wolf County, the Wolves We'll play Riverside Christian at six, and then after that game, for the first time all season, Breathitt County will play city rival Jackson City. JC trying not to end its season on a three-game losing streak. That game should be a lot of fun. Last couple of brackets before we go to break the 56th at Owsley County. The ladies start on Monday. Powell County will play Lee County at six. Then Estel will play host Owsley at 7:30. Owsley will be going for its fourth straight win, but the Lady Owls were beat both times they played the Lady Engineers this season. Now to the 56 boys, they will tip off Tuesday. Estel and Lee will hook it up for a third time this year at 7 p.m. Estel started its season off with a 28 point win over Lee and then at home just a couple weeks ago, the engineers crushed Lee by 37. So Estel is the huge favor here. And then on Wednesday in the bottom bracket, Powell will play Owsley 7 p.m. tip time for that one. The Pirates beat the Owls both times by double digits in the regular season. More brackets next. Plus, Josh has a really good piece on the 1954 Kentucky Wildcat basketball team that finished the season 25 and Thank you. Yes. But first, like Jamie said, more brackets. <laughs> 10 more to go exact as we go through districts 57 through 62. 10 more brackets to show you tonight <laughs> on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime District Tournament Bracket Edition. Our bracketology <laughs> is what it uh, looks like. Let's go through districts 57 through 62 now. Here is the girls 57 district. All games at Johnson Central. Sheldon Clark will play Patesville. And then the defending 57th district champion Lady Eagles will play McGothan County. The first round starts Monday, February the 23rd. The Lady Cards and Lady Tigers tip things off at 630. And then JC and McGothan will play at 830 p.m. Still can't believe Paintsville's not won it since 1932. Ooh. The boys 57th bracket has identical matchups. It will start the next day on Tuesday after the girls. So Tuesday the 24th, the two time defending district champ Johnson Central will take on McGothan County. The Hornets have lost two in a row to end the regular season, while JC is on a roll, winning eight games in a row. Meanwhile, Sheldon Clark and Paintsville will tip off around 8.30 Tuesday night. The two teams split both regular season games. To the 58th district, the girls will tip things off Monday. Betsy Lane and Allen Central at 6 o'clock, and on Tuesday at 6, Prestonsburg will play South Floyd. The Lady Raiders are the host side. 
of this district tournament. And Justin Triplett has his Lady Raiders on a roll. They have won eight in a row to end the regular season. Hey, the Betsy Lane boys are also on a roll heading into the district tournament. Ten wins in a row for the Bobcats. They will play Allen Central in round one on Monday at 7.30 p.m. And then the winner will either play Prestonsburg or South Floyd. The Black Cats and Raiders will tip off Tuesday night at 7.30. Peaberg had a rough go at it the last time out against South Floyd, losing by 21 points. In the 59th district, the Shelby Valley Lady Cats have at times been up and down this season, but have remained in the mountain top 10 all year. The two-time defending 15th region champs will play Pierist in round one. That's on Monday at 630. And then on Tuesday, the 15th region All-A champs this year, the East Ridge Lady Warriors will take on Pikeville. Both of these games held at Shelby Valley High School. The boys 59th will also be at Shelby Valley. The Wildcats will take on Pikeville in the bottom bracket Tuesday at 8 o'clock. And then the winner of that game will play either East Ridge or Pierist. That round one matchup set for Monday at 8 o'clock. The Warriors have been in the last three district championships, but have lost all three. You have to go back to the 2003-2004 season when they won a district championship. They also won the 15th region title that year as well. The final district in the 15th region, the 60th, welcoming in Lawrence County this season. The tournament was scheduled to start on Monday, but has since been moved to Tuesday. So here are the girls' matchups, Belfry and Phelps. We'll open things Tuesday at 6.30, while Pike Central and Lawrence County will play Wednesday at 6.30. As for the boys' bracket, regular season champion Pike County Central plays Phelps on Tuesday at 8.15, and then on Wednesday also at 8.15, Lawrence County will play Belfry. Both the girls' and boys' 60th district tournaments will be played at Phelps High School. We cap it off with the 62nd District East Carter versus Elliott Girls at 6 p.m. on Monday. And then after that, West Carter will play Morgan County at around 8 p.m. These games will be held at West Carter High School. The East Carter Lady Raiders have won the last two 62nd District tournaments. An identical bracket on the boys' side when it comes to matchups. Elliott County will take on host West Carter 7 o'clock on Tuesday the 24th. While East Carter will play a dark horse for the regional championship, Morgan County, look out for the Cougars, 7 o'clock on Wednesday the 25th. The championship is set for next Friday the 27th at 7 o'clock. East Carter, your defending 62nd district champion. Much more to come on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime, but as we go to break, here's a look at this week's Alice Lloyd College Boys and Girls Mountain Top Tens. Well, we don't have a shot of the week, but we do have our McDonald's student athlete of the week. Chelsea Lucas is a senior at Shelby Valley High School where she has a 3.96 grade point average. She is a member of the Beta Club and National Honor Society and has been named to the honor roll. She is also a member of the varsity cheerleading squad. Chelsea Lucas, tonight's McDonald's student athlete of the week. Tuesday night, the Kentucky Wildcats won their 26th consecutive game to start the season, surpassing the 1954 Wildcats for the best start in program history. That year, Kentucky started and finished 25 and 0, but did not play in the NCAA tournament. Floyd County native Pete Grigsby Jr. was a sophomore on that team, nicknamed the Famous Ones, and explains why this season's team is searching for title number nine and not number 10. We practiced all my freshman year, 52 53, because the NCAA knocked us out of playing. They just said, we're not going to let you play any games at all because of the uh, point shaving scandal in 47 48. So they had investigated, and now, years later, they were punishing Kentucky. And uh, then we came back in the next season, and, and Coach Rupp practiced us all year long for that one year. And uh, of course, we had some players return, and nobody graduated. And that's why Cliff Hagen, Frank Ramsey, and Lucy Roppers went on to graduate school. And they became all Americans that year. We want to uh, prove uh, to the United States, to NCAA, that we were still a good basketball team in spite of the punishment they gave us the year before. So it was just a matter of, of that desire lasted a whole year for us because we, we set out that whole year and uh, we just wanted, wanted to play and prove to NCAA and our critics that we could play basketball and have a good team uh, under the rules, and we did do that. We didn't know it was going to be historic. Uh, Coach Rupp wanted to win. He wanted to show uh, the NCAA up and uh, have the best team, and we were the best team in the nation, number one, all year long. 
we were all grooming for the NCAA tournament because we won the conference. We were ranked number one by the AP poll and the Helms Foundation poll all season long. And uh, we came down to that point, and uh, we thought we were going to play in the NCAA. Well, Coach Rupp got word that at this time, no graduate students, for some strange reason, were allowed to play in the tournament. And so that knocked Cliff Hagen, Frank Ramsey, and Luce Rompers out of playing in the tournament. And so we had a team meeting, and uh, Coach Rupp explained everything to us, and he took a vote. And invariably, each one of us, uh, I think Coach Rupp used his influence a little bit, uh, voted, yeah, we, we won't play without, you know, at, we're not going to go to the tournament without our, uh, without our players. All those guys that played on that team felt like that why are we having to pay for something that happened three or four or five years ago and deny us from playing. And that's what they did. They denied us from playing freshman basketball. They denied us uh, from playing in the NCAA tournament. Uh, the NCAA was unfair to Kentucky. Uh, we could have won the NCAA. We beat LaSalle and Tom Gola, the All-American for LaSalle, in the first UKIT uh, tournament. So after the NCAA tournament was over and LaSalle had won it, uh, Ham's Foundation ranked Kentucky number one team of the year. They sent us a big trophy about five feet high declaring Kentucky number one team of the season in spite of not playing in NCAA. So we, we felt like it was unfair, uh, but we felt like we proved, proved a point uh, by still being ranked number one, undefeated. Uh, you know, that was a little bit of solace for us. Now six players from that 1954 team currently have their jer jersey hanging in the rafters of Rupp Arena, Cliff Hagen, Frank Ramsey, Lou Seropoulos, Billy Evans, Gail Rose, and Corbin native Jerry Bird. And there's another Wildcat going to have his jersey hanging yep. tomorrow after tomorrow night before the Auburn game. That's right, Tony Delk. His jersey will now be in the Raptors at <laughs> Rupp Arena. By the way, good stuff there. It was really nice to Thank hear you. from him. That was really good. But uh, Kentucky Auburn, 7 p.m. tomorrow. I might be there, I might not, depending <laughs> on the weather. You know how it goes. Let's hope the district tournaments that you just saw play out the way they're supposed to. And sure. Mother Nature kind of takes a hiatus a little bit from us here in eastern Kentucky. Yeah. We, we're done here, but we're not done uh, for the newscast. We're going to send it back over to, to Chief Meteorologist Shane Smith with 